Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha with Ice Cream Fitness here. And today I want to talk to you guys just very briefly about EMG studies for different muscles. But hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. Alright, all of us have seen these EMG studies that have come out over the years, particularly the ones by Brett Contreras that have come out in the last couple of years, and I've actually read all of those that he did. And as far as in-house stuff goes that he did himself, I'm actually appreciative of his efforts. But I think something that needs to be clarified when we talk about these EMG studies, which basically are hooking up electrodes to different heads of muscles, and having people do different lifts and actually seeing the amount of muscle activation or neuromuscular activation going on that we can read with a computer. And the problem with that is that this type of study, we cannot verify the accuracy of it. So when we do studies and different electrodes are put on all three heads of the delt and the traps and then different shoulder exercises are done as an example, the exercise that shows that it might be number one for the delt because of the possible inaccuracies of the way these studies are done might actually be number four on the list. And the lift that turns out to be the fourth best on the study could be number one and we have no way of actually knowing that because there is a very, very large margin for error. And the reason is these are just surface readings off of a single point and it's through the skin and in order to get a really accurate reading, if you wanted to take one of these EMG studies and get a truly accurate reading as to which of these different lifts activates the most muscle fibers or gives you the best neuromuscular recruitment with a given weight during a, a given lift, we would need to actually make sure that the loads are relatively equal for one on every single lift for the person so they would be working with say their five rep max or their six, six rep max on every single lift not just get an approximation because if there's a 10% difference or 20% difference in their intensity there, then obviously they're going to get a that large of a difference on a lift and you could actually get the order mixed up on which ones are the most effective. Now number two, because these are surface readings off of a single point, that also doesn't make them that useful because if we want to get truly accurate, we have ethical issues with performing the study correctly. If you want to get a truly accurate reading on an EMG study, you're going to need to take a biopsy needle and insert it an inch or two deep into the muscle that you're reading to hook the electrodes to for the person lifting. And on top of that, you can't just put one in. You're going to need for the delts, you might need as many as 12 or 15 different needles stuck an inch deep in there that are left in while the person is lifting. So when they're doing their lateral raises, they have 15 needles with wires hooked onto them an inch or two inches deep into the muscle and left there for the duration of the study because if you move the different needles you mess up the readings from lift to lift so that might be on, stuck in them for 20 minutes or 30 minutes straight. So we run into ethical issues or even getting someone to volunteer for this because you're also looking at potential muscular damage from leaving these needles in that long while doing lifts. You could actually cause trauma to the muscle, tearing, scar tissue, all sorts of things. So we can't really do these type of studies accurately so keep that in mind when you guys see these things on these EMG studies. Are they nice for a ballpark to say hey this muscle is getting good activation or poor activation on this lift? Yes but can they pinpoint it down to the degree that they are shown on the numbers in the studies? No we cannot absolutely cannot get it that close is what it's showing there. All we can look at and say is this muscle being activated and is it being activated quite a bit or minimally. Those are the only questions we can really answer. We can't say it's getting 50% activation or 100% activation or 90%. We can't get it anywhere near that precise. So there you have it guys. These studies are interesting just to give you a ballpark idea but do not take these numbers to the bank because the way these type of studies are done they're not accurate and we have no means of verifying the accuracy off of these EMG skin surface studies. So take them with a grain of salt. Alright guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you next time.